And I'm getting mighty tired of your traveling ways and of listening to that jackass Bray. That, um, that Reeves case in particular is a weird one because think about all the other crap that's going on like now compared to when it happened. I was like, what, six years ago? Uh, eight. Eight. Okay, even more. Like that's that's insane amount of time that's lapsed. Like it's nowhere near front of mind. So like I had to kind of like you were talking about, I had to like re-up on Personal. the details. Yeah, because I was like, well, that seems fucking wild. And I know you said you had a, a different perspective on stuff. That's that's awesome. That's what I wanted to hear. But like I had to re like go back and re rewatch the video and re-familiarize myself with what was reported at least. And I, I was still kind of like, so it, it's weird that like all these high profile things, like the Rittenhouse thing was months after it happened because of the, uh, you know, the media uproar. This was eight years. It's kind of wild, you know? Yeah. Well, it's, um, I don't think it got quite as much media attention this go around. No, it went under the radar, completely under the radar this weekend. Even today, when I was looking up stuff to uh, just kind of sure up what we're doing and cut off, like, it's like a non-story, dude. Mm -hmm. The only stuff I could find was, like, local ABC, local Fox. There's no write-ups about the movie theater shooter. Like, it's just a non-story. It's kind of it's kind of weird. It was, uh, it was a big story when it happened because... It was so ridiculous. The talking points on it, like the guy threw a bag of popcorn at him and he shot him. Mm -hmm. Like news will love to run with that shit. Yeah. You know. But uh scary Russian guy is, is uh a lot more juicy right now, I think, than the verdict of, of old old cop shooting somebody eight years ago. Well, and there's no racial factor either. So they yeah. can't sink their teeth into it. That's huge. You know. Yeah. So because this this was kind of uh before all that got real big you know yeah if you think eight years ago we weren't quite at the boiling point at the fever pitch that we're at now uh like socially that's yeah. a huge that's a that's a big that's a big point because even the rittenhouse case like i i referenced a couple minutes ago i was going to bring up when you just said that 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 wasn't a point of of, of a racial you know tension either but the media tried to spin it that way, even though it had nothing to do with race. The media spun it that way. Like there was a, a week long, maybe 10 day period that if you read anything, you know, if you were ill informed or you just one of those people that skims headlines, you would have thought that uh, the kid shot three black people at a Black Lives Matter protest. So they, they inserted that stuff in there without directly saying it to, to allow people to make the inference that it was a race-based crime to get those extra clicks. I think you're hundred yeah. percent accurate there. It's kind of scary. Yep. Yep. It, it gives you a window into that like shit eight years and we've, we've transitioned that much. Right. I <laughs> think, I mean, <laughs> it's scary, dude. <laughs> they're, they're moving on, but you know, uh, it's, it's scarier because they're discarding that like it's trash. Like, ah, we don't care about that anymore. Mm -hmm. We'll leave that behind. But they're moving on to the bigger shit, which is war now. So I don't mean, mean to get off on that path, but I'm just saying like this. We can, we can riff kinda, on it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, look, I was looking. And I guess I can use the appropriate word propaganda, but any movie in the last 40 years, with a protagonist, I would say upwards of 80% of the time, the antagonist was of some type of Eastern European descent when it comes to a lot of American films anyway. It's the Nazis, it's the Ruskies, it's this, it's that. It's a guy with a thick accent that you don't really know where he's from, but that accent's thick enough for me to not trust him. I think it's all kind of part of that dehumanizing process. So like, I saw a, a meme today, like, um it was the super troopers it was a super troopers meme where they're in the back of the car and it's like you boys like mexico and it had the uh the ukrainian uh i'm sorry prime minister president i think president 
uh, talking about giving out AKs and, and ammo. And then the very next frame was like that dude from Super Troopers looking back, talking to Americans like, free for uh, select fire weapons. You boys like Ukraine. Woo-hoo! But it all feeds into that like other, the other, the other, the Ruskies, the bad guys, other, other, other narrative. And it, it, it becomes, not becomes, it, it, it kind of makes at least me think in terms of that that long con psyop of you know the last 30 years movies you and i grew up on that that european guy the russian is always 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 the bad guy rocky you know Ivan Dragov, all, all, all this stuff it's the russians always the bad guy red dawn i mean all, all that stuff it's always it's always the russians uh most of the time like i said it's somewhere around 80 percent, right but making that person other is is what makes us able to dehumanize them you know what i mean and and then you end up with these weird situations. So, and I think it's used not just in that case, it's, it's used all over, but it's, it's, it's really wild when you think about how much energy is put into, even when we weren't in hot war, but this cold war has been going on for a very long time, man. Very long time. It's wild, wild stuff. And the other side of it, I mean, I don't mean to get off on the, on the Russia thing, but like, there's no media coming out from there. We're completely cut off from anything on, on their end. And I'm not saying I want to hear or justify anything that's going on, but like, it's wild. Like the mom, the, the, the old Russian lady or the old lady down the road making, making pierogies and shit. She's not, she's not, you know, calculating offensives on, on the Ukraine. So like, why are people throwing bricks through a window? Like it's, it's, it's weird, man. It's weird, 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 weird. But like the Reeves thing. Yeah. It, like you said, it kind of just gets pushed aside. Like you shared a you shared a funny meme earlier. At, you know the, the Toy Story. Toy Story right? Yeah, <laughs> it's but that's so true. But and then did the same thing with the with the theater shooter dude. Like eight years ago, it was all over the news, and then of course it went away. Investigation. Eight years later, we have trial and verdict, and crickets. I mean. You can find the you can find it locally, but there's no national headline. I don't hear you know me, news media outlets that I'm that I listen to reporting on it like I did eight years ago. All I hear right now is Russia, Ukraine, Russia, Ukraine, Russia, Ukraine, Joe Biden. That's it. Yeah, Fauci's gone. That dude's deleted. Not a When's word. The last time you seen? Not a word. Yeah, Not even talking crap time. about him. Yeah, he's gone. Isn't that wild? They were making fucking action figures a couple months ago. <laughs> the, the the bob the Fauci bobblehead yeah yeah uh, it's just like you said it's literally the Toy Story meme well, we're done with this now we'll see ya it's just gone uh, like what what the now fuck <laughs> now uh yeah and they're saying uh masks don't work now oh yeah I I I'm like hold on pump the fucking brakes hey the science a lot has of changed. Us okay We've, the science is <laughs> saying this shit for so long yeah, yeah, yeah no 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 but i want you to understand that you were wrong still when you said that a year and a half ago you were wrong it's only right now because the science has changed when you said it it was still wrong you couldn't have by known. the way you're also a bigot yeah. um but you were wrong when you said that now now the science is correct you weren't right things have changed <laughs> i can't coexist with these people Sure you can. You're already doing it, but like I, I know, I hate to use these played out terms, but like mental gymnastics comes to mind. Like you yeah. can do a triple back tuck to be able to get from A to B in this thought process that some of these people have. It's wild, dude. And uh, there's people out there, and it seems, and, and it might be misrepresented, you know, virtually, but there's a large amount of people that just sit idly by and wait for the next set of instructions from daddy versus living their lives and making decisions uh, like a, I don't know, healthy, somewhat evenly witted adult would do for, you know, survival and, and growth of their community or their family. Like it's, it's so weird. Like, I got intelligent people around me telling me X, Y, and Z, and they feel this way about stuff. And, you know, they, I've seen friends of mine have their businesses shut down, but I'm still going to listen to what everything says on the TV. 
Well, then that, that whole fucking rug gets pulled out and they're like, okay, yeah. Mm. The New York Times publishes a story about elections being fortified. Masks don't work now, blah, 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 blah. Oh, but if you're protesting, it's okay to be in a big group and like all these inconsistencies. And now it's just kind of like, uh, and everybody that was there like barking, doing the brown shirt work is just going like, well, I, 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 the, the orders, I guess, are so I guess we're good. No more orders. And everyone else is just looking at him like, like I saw what you've been posting for the last two years. I remember you yelling and berating me. We used to be friends. Like, I remember all that. It didn't go away. I'm not going to, like, you know, do anything. But you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit doesn't just go away. People are just like, oh, eh. the last two years was kind of weird, huh? So anyway, guys, <laughs> what the fuck? It doesn't work. But hey, war, Putin. Yeah, you can't just delete it. No, it happened. What are, that, what are you talking about? Well, what are you talking well, about? <laughs> that's the only way you can delete it. And it seems awfully convenient, you know, because I'm a real good out. I'm not saying that this is what's happening, but boy, is it convenient. It's super convenient. You know? I'm interested to see what and, history um, books look like 10 years from now. Like what they say about the last, I don't know, two or three years that we've lived through. Like what it actually comes out in, in history books. Probably not American history books. We'll look at, I don't know, some other country. I don't want to select one just yet, but. You know, wherever, well, the, wherever history books are being written, I'm curious to read the uh, the late 2000s America's chapter. <laughs> the the victor writes them. So. That's what I'm saying. Wherever it is, it probably will be here. Wherever those books are written. If it's here, it's going to have um, a different flag on it. But, you know, think thinking is hard. It takes a lot of time. <laughs> uh you know, just like I was doing earlier, I've got to go and look and and I'll say this. So I outsource a lot of my thinking to other uh, places, other people, because they have they can afford the time to delve deep into some of these subjects. And <clears throat> I don't want to say regurgitate, but that kind of is what's happening. Give it back to me in a summarized form. Because the fact is, for like these two cases, I can't sit there and read all of the legal briefs on it. And then, you know, the 40 hours of video uh, of in the trial room with closing arguments, opening arguments, all that. I, it's impossible. I mean, yeah, one person could do it, but that's all that one person would do. I can't do that <laughs> because there's other stuff that I do. Right. Mm -hmm. So but I, I think people think that they're doing we're doing the same thing and we're not because the big distinction is, you know, people might look to mainstream media as a news source and the news says, hey, do X, Y, Z, right? And that is a trusted source for them, but they're not thinking past that. Mm -hmm. You know, the big distinction is taking a source, trying to identify it as credible and then steel manning that argument. Like, why could this be wrong? Why could this be right? That's the, try to pick it apart. There's the huge pitfall. The, it, they're not willing to. It's it's the instant I get the confirmation bias because I can I can phrase whatever I want to look up differently based on the results I want to see in my search engine, and I see three hour articles that that reinforce what I already thought. Boom! I was right all along. That research over. <laughs> Mm -hmm. there, there's no steel man there's no let's poke holes in this let's verify our sources like you said they're, they're getting information from from news sources and and the big difference and i guess even a step back like you said would be that it, it yes it's a trusted news source to them but it's never it's never been vetted because they've gone to it more often than not and found the confirmation bias that they've sought out so why look any further right right exactly so I don't know. I'm not even satisfied with my level of uh, ability to research something because it just takes it just takes too much damn time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these things, it doesn't even matter, right? Like I could be right about something because I went to the nth degree to find out about this, that, and the other thing, and it doesn't it doesn't matter. It's about an irrelevant subject. It doesn't change, Jack. But but also, I tend to use intuition a lot mm -hmm. as well. And uh, I hate to say it, but that shit's been pretty correct like a lot so you know if you're a betting man it's like hey 90 10 okay well i'm just gonna take the 90 yeah sorry not sorry you especially know. when you realize how in common uncommon 
on how common sense actually is. It, it makes those inclinations, it, at least for me. And I could, I could it just as easily turn around and say, it's, I'm using my own confirmation bias the same way as I, I've said it in an accusatory way about other people. But sure. the, the proof's kind of in the pudding where I, I can interact on a, on a day to day and realize that most people are operating without that basic level of common sense or, or that that process in their brain of these are things you should do these are things you shouldn't do this situation could have only happened so many different ways because of i don't know physics and logic versus you know a pterodactyl flew in here and shoved a marshmallow in somebody's nose and suffocated them well no somebody probably attacked them and, and broke their nose like there's Obviously, other things could happen, but logic would dictate it's probably A, B, or C. But again, that requires a lot more thinking than I think most people want to put energy out. And the biggest thing that I just picked up from you is the, the fact that you're willing to suss this stuff out and to steel man it versus it's a lot less energy to just be like, well, I'm right. That's it. Yeah. And will willingness to be wrong. Yeah. You know, it's an ego check. So. Like, that's a big one. Because when you actually do the right, the, the, the due diligence of steel manning your argument and you realize, okay, maybe there's, it's not as solid as I thought. There's some other things I didn't consider. Well, then, yeah, you have to be able to take that bite of humble pie and take a step back and say, hey, I processed information. Outcome is maybe a little differently than, than I thought it would be initially. And being able to separate your ego from that, you know what I mean? Because we've talked about this before. People will attach themselves to their version of the truth and their identity to it and which is why i think you see some of these uh you know that the soy mouth meme like that's why you see some of that because i think people are like attached to their ideology like on a, almost on a physical level because they they believe in it so much and they've reinforced it with some so much of that confirmation bias it's kind of wild well it, it's it's their get into society card right because if as so long as they hold those ideologies and the correct ones and have all the correct opinions, they can be part of the club. And that's a pretty convincing reason to set aside your ability to think, right? Yeah. Like especially if you have no content. Yeah. You're you're void of any kind of value. And anytime you do think that you just end up in a in a ass trap anyway. Um, like why not? Just toe the party line and Hey, I'll fall in. What's up, guys? And they usually uh, usually are low value people. I, <laughs> I just say, but like literally, they, you know, aside from the fact that they share the same opinions as most, they don't have any individual value. If, if they did, they would have more of a reason to fortify that individual value, which would encourage independent thought. Doesn't matter if you're talking business, personally, relationship-wise, whatever it is. If you have inherent value, or you can at least see your own inherent value, you have, in my opinion, I think less of a reason to acquiesce to what's going on societally if if you know what that value actually is. Like, I'll take myself for an example. I don't need to fall in line. I know what I've got going on. Like, what we're doing right. is good shit. People like it. We're strong, we're powerful, we're motivated, we're kicking ass, we're helping people. I don't need to fall in line with what anybody else is saying because I know the value that we that we present. Now, if things weren't going so well, I might be more inclined to be like, ah, you know, this podcast, for example, let's let's talk more pop culture, let's talk celebrity crap, let's talk politics over like blah 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 blah, because that's what's being consumed right now. Well, we got a good thing going on. I don't need to do that. There's there's a million of that. In the same way that you're talking about, like the the masses, the herd, the blind, unadulterated garbage heap is it's just out there. Like I don't need to pile onto it. We can do something over here. Yep, and feel so much better about it too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and we don't have to be right all the time. That's the fun part about it. Like because we're not attached, we're not married to our ideas. We don't have to be right. We can be like, oh man. I thought, oh, whoa, that was stupid. I was completely ill-informed on that. Thanks. It, and when you approach things from that place of understanding, it allows for new information to come in and you to process it and, and maybe change your perspective, which is supposedly what science was supposed to be. Mm. Uh, uh. You know, so all that being said, um, I personally thought uh, with the Reeves situation, I was actually shocked at the verdict. 
Um, I'm sure a lot of people were. Uh, and I, I, to be fair, I hadn't really looked into it. Um, I remember hearing about it and I'm like, that could, that dude's going to jail. See you later. Right. You know, like you're fucking gone, buddy. Um, and then we didn't hear anything about it until the verdict recently. <clears throat> so I dug into it a little bit and, um, the original story that I heard was altercation, young guy, younger guy and his wife guys on phone supposedly texting back and forth with babysitter about status of young daughter older gentleman retired cop hey turn your phone off f you i'm talking to my daughter back and forth this is the original story some years ago it was reported that mr reeves left the theater to get a gun came back after notifying management on his way back in another altercation happened where popcorn was thrown and mr reeves pulled out firearm and, and shot uh the other gentleman in the theater and killed him um since then the information that i've gotten i'm mean, feel free to correct me on any of this is that mr reeves had the weapon on his person the entire time did not exit the building whatsoever when he left the initial theater it was to notify management and come back um but other than that there wasn't a whole lot of other details that i got other than you know and we'll talk we can talk about the trial itself specifically um but I was also really surprised with verdict, but I also heard, again, heard, because I, I haven't had a ton of time to verify this stuff, um, that, and if you want to separate this, no problem, the, 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 the jury was actually given instructions by the judge um, of, I believe, four lesser charges that they could find Mr. Reeves guilty of, and still chose not to do so. So it wasn't just, you know, one of those situations where the prosecutor overshoots, hey, we're going for murder one, and they don't, they can't prove murder one, or maybe they could prove manslaughter, but that's not on the table because they went for that murder one charge and the guy walks away scot-free. From what I understand, there were lesser charges presented. So if there's any of that in terms of what I've heard reported that's incorrect or you know anything different, talk to me, baby. So... Um... Yeah, the only things that I picked up on was the getting in the gun and coming back. Yeah, but you already addressed that. Um, that wasn't the case. He had it on it. Uh, I had it on him. Um, from what I understand, and this is kind of irrelevant, but it turns out he wasn't texting the babysitter. He was okay. texting some sort of gambling service. So he's bullshitting. Not that, yeah. not that, that matters. No. I mean, the guy's not looking at his phone. He's like, yeah, I'm doing whatever. Fuck off. You know. It's during the previews, like, and I, like, come on, man, mm -hmm. who cares? You know, that's 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 just my personal opinion on it. Sure. Like during the movie, okay, that's different, but like during the previews, like, who gives a shit? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that piece of it in a minute. <laughs> I, do, I do. I want to talk. I do want to talk about that. But, um, in any case, uh, yeah. So. There was, you know, he left to try to get management. I guess they either didn't come in time or decided this isn't worth it for us was to get this, involved. Was the manager notified or was management notified before or after what we're calling physical assault? The projectile being Bef thrown. Before. And to be okay. fair, I don't know that management was necessarily okay. or if it was just some sort of popcorn pusher. I, I don't know. Right. P -p -p Employee. Reportedly. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, but in any case, when he came back, um, the uh, uh, Chad, I think it was Chad also. Yes. Yes. So Olson. Chad, yes, uh, had already put his phone away, and um, Mr. Reeve said something to the effect of, "Oh, I see you put your phone away. Um, just want to let you know I left to tell management about it." I don't know exactly how it was said. How it was said would be very important contextually, like you know. Oh, I see you put the, your dumbass phone away. Good thing because I went to go, you know, yeah. or if he was they were like just about to come in here, crack your bitch ass, yeah. buddy. <laughs> or, or if it was a situation of like, oh, thanks for putting your phone away. Listen, you know, I went to go tell management. So if they come, just we're we're cool. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't know which of the two it was, right? Absolutely. Um, so right after that, 
uh, Mr. Olson they, and him get into a verbal conflict because I'm sure Mr. Olson had probably just about had it with this old dude giving him grief about being on his damn phone for like two minutes during the previews. For 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 a little asterisk here, because that's that's funny that you said that. The way it was presented in the media, again, we're talking uh, appearances versus reality. This old dude, this old dude, this old dude. You're talking retired SWAT commander who's six foot five and two hundred and fifty pounds, yeah. not some feeble old man with a cane. Six foot five retired SWAT commander, like. Dude can handle himself. Now, is he running a 4 4 40? Of course not. <laughs> but he's not some enfeebled old man in the corner either. Uh, that That's a matter of for debate. I, I But I, I know what you're saying. Um, so apparently he got frustrated and then threw his popcorn at him. Mm-hmm. And then purportedly within that series of events, he also struck him on the head with what was later known to be his phone. Maybe he had his phone in his hand and he kind of did this, hmm. you know. I, I don't that know exactly. At all. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, popcorn got thrown. And then right. in that same instance or whatever, before people are seated and everything settled, he hits him over the head. I, it, it wasn't explained really clearly exactly okay. how it happened. I'm imagining popcorn in one hand phone in the other yeah, and you're just know. like yeah. so disgusted with them you're like and it, so that that's what i'm imagining that i don't know that as fact mm-hmm. but apparently from what reeves was saying he was struck in the head by an object and he didn't know what it was but it was later later discovered to be the phone so of, is that uh, Mr. Olson. just um i i and i know i'm not pinning you to the fire here but i i know that there's hours and hours and hours of that trial footage so i understand not going through all of it was that reported just by mr reeves do you know or was there any of the other witnesses corroborating that because i know they had several people on the stand that kind of came in after after there was shots to help and, and respond I don't know that any other witnesses necessarily, or I hadn't heard that any witnesses corroborated that part of it specifically, but I I, I would only say it might not be reasonable for anybody to have even noticed that. Sure. Because if you think about being in a movie theater during the previews, during the previews, the lights are, that's when the lights go down. Mm -hmm. Um, I try not to sit by people in movie theaters just like (laughs) a little bit. So I'm usually like way off in the distance. Well, um, especially so I'm sure the guy they, that you just got into it with that left to talk to the manager, came back, and like you said, he said his phone was away. So at some point, popcorn is being thrown, phones back out. I don't know. It's, we're adding yeah. shit together, though, so who knows? Okay, go ahead. Go right. ahead. Um, so it's at that point that um, Mr. Reeves drew his gun and shot him. So uh, let me let me share this uh thing here on my screen okay can you see this Mm -hmm. okay so this is uh from law of self-defense it's a company i do some business with and uh, working on my instructor uh course on and he's got um self-defense law broken down into five different elements um, and the idea is, is that you need all five in order to be justified uh, in a, in a self-defense uh, situation. So the first of which uh, is innocence, obviously, right? So don't start the fight. If you're the initial aggressor, generally speaking, you cannot therefore claim self-defense. There are some caveats that we won't get into it here, but just suffice to say, you can't start the fight. And that's a reasonable expectation, right? That's something that you might expect to see on a list of five different things for uh, self-defense, right? Sure. I noticed that it Um, says physical aggressor. So the shouting match can start and go on forever. But the person that's the physical aggressor would be the one that started the fight according to this? Generally speaking. Now, there's some, there's some, some stuff with provocation. Okay. You know, words do mean things. Um, especially in the context of if you say you're going to kill somebody, 
and you have the apparent ability to do so by way of weapon or physical force, okay. and you're manifesting that physical force or weapon, that can be an, a, an important thing in terms of how it's legally interpreted. So words are important, but you know, actions speak louder, right? Absolutely. So, um, imminence is the other. So it's an attack in progress. It's not something that uh, is ha has happened in the past and not a hypothetical in the future. Um, it has to be happening right now and it's otherwise unavoidable, right? So that's going to be the standard of imminence. Now here you can make the argument, this is imminent, right? This is happening right now. It's a dy dynamic situation that's constantly changing. He didn't, he didn't leave the theater, come back and shoot the guy in the back of the head, right? <laughs> like it was a fight that was ongoing, right? Um, avoidance. So avoidance is not something that necessarily we have to worry about in Florida because that is where stand your ground comes in. Basically all stand your ground is, is it removes the uh, necessity for you to escape if you can safely. So okay. there are a number of states that do require that you do that before using deadly force. Florida being a stand your ground state is not one of them. Um, proportionality. So right tool, right job. Deadly defensive force may be used only to counter a deadly force threat. If the threat is non-deadly, only non-deadly defensive force may be used. So that's going to be an important thing here, and which is why I had my doubts about this case. And the fifth and final one is reasonableness. Um, so basically, you're going to be judged as a reasonable and prudent person might in the same situation, given the same facts and knowing the same things you did at the time. Now, if he thought Mr. Olson was going to transform into a 10 foot tall centaur and put a pole arm through his body, that would not be reasonable, right? Even if he truly believed it, it, it needs to pass two, two tests, the subjectively and the objectively reasonable. There is a sense of subjective reasonableness, right? You can misinterpret things as they happen because it doesn't require you to be perfect, but you do also need to be objectively reasonable and understanding like, hey, it's not a 10 foot tall centaur, right? Um, that's not objectively reasonable. So you have to pass both of those tests in order to pass the reasonable test, reasonableness test. So you lose any one of those five, except for avoidance, of course, this big caveat there here in Florida, then you generally lose um, your right to self-defense. Now, the innocence thing. Mr. Reeves retains the right to innocence because all he did, even if I think it's unreasonable, was tell the guy to put his cell phone away. That's not cause for getting popcorn thrown at you or getting punched in the face or whatever, right? Now, they can have a genuinely disagreement about it, but none of what he did up until that point had deserved battery or assault, right? Um, imminence. We talked about that. It was happening right then and there. It was otherwise unavoidable. The guy had turned around. He's inside a, you know, a, a lane of theater seats. You can't really get away, right? You're pretty much, you have to deal with it. Um, he didn't have uh, the need to avoid. Uh, avoid. Um, now, proportionality. This is why it was in the news. Um, it was popcorn, right? That's what you just, they focus on popcorn, popcorn, popcorn. Because of course, somebody throwing popcorn at you does not, ex you know, you don't deserve a bullet for that, right? I wouldn't think so. <laughs> right. Now, there is a caveat that I'll loop back to on that in a second, a legal loophole, maybe. Um, but they did also focus on the fact that he was struck in the head. Now, being struck in the head with a cell phone, you know, you might not think that that is a big deal, but I guess it depends, right? It depends on the person who's being struck, how hard they were struck, and the other, you know, facts of what's going on in the moment. 
So an elderly gentleman being struck by a younger gentleman in a violent fashion after having a heated argument and not knowing what he had been hit with. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I'd have to be in his shoes, in his head at the time that happened to really judge that for myself. But that does somewhat pass the subjectively uh, reasonable in that there is at least, at least, um, you know, some room for debate there. Now, the legal justification, this is what was kind of interesting. Can we can we pause real quick on that? What's up? Yes. Brianna? I, I just because I have a question. Can you go back to that last one real quick? Yes. And now again, I'm, I'm asking just because I know this is a, a point of focus for you in your in your training. But um, without having and again, I, I, I could easily, I'm sure, go through the witness testimony and get the answer to this. And I, I have not. So let that be a, a, a bridge to yep. what I'm asking here. Um, you, you mentioned that sometimes provocation verbally can can be considered aggression without knowing how that exchange went that you mentioned before uh once he returned to the theater how do we know if if uh that innocence was maintained through the process did he come back and say you fucked up blah 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 i told management your shit you know and so end with some type of verbal threat. i don't know i'm asking like right. that that's that's a potential right that you you mentioned that initially so for me that innocence part's not quite as as cut and dry obviously you can make arguments for the other ones but we don't know in terms of that innocence part if if what you're telling me as far as that verbal provocation is is uh you know one of those bridges to that physical aggression it, it's an ag uh, well what i would say is, is it's an aggravating factor okay but i don't know that verbal provocation is ever a bridge to physical in other words that you can say anything that would legally justify somebody physically hurting you can, and and i was just as a thought ac exercise is there anything that you th can think of that somebody could say to you that you think would give you le and legal justification to hurt them that's a very different question than i'm sure yeah. most people would be prepared <laughs> to answer because there's a lot of shit you can say that'll get you punched in the mouth of course but legally of course. legally right. which is what we're talking about no you're absolutely right you're absolutely right so you know i i mentioned the verbal aspect of it because you know for um certain charges it, it's a combination of verbal and physical um because you know like you say you're going to kill somebody and then you have the visible or physical means with which to do so. Like, hey, I'm going to shoot you with this gun. Here's a gun, you know, stuff like that. Okay. So, um, and when I say reasonableness, so like there's a big enough question mark there that it could cause reasonable doubt. And that's all we're really asking for here, mm -hmm. right? So it's a high bar for the prosecution to overcome. And that's a good thing, right? Because we want to err on the side of releasing some potential bad people in order to not convict any innocent people. So that's the why idea, the bar is so high. The idea, the idea is innocent until proven guilty, yes. Right. That's the idea. Um, so, so the defense's job is, is just creating that doubt, mm -hmm. creating and reinforcing that doubt throughout the trial. trial. And one could think of a scenario in their head, had they been 65 years old, 66, whatever it was, um, being hit in the head by somebody uh, 20 years your junior with a hard object during the course of a violent argument. You know, maybe he saw stars, who knows, right? Um, I'm sure they know now because it's been talked about in the court, but I, I, I haven't focused on that, that part of it yet. So, um, but that being said, there is a Florida statute um, that turns battery into aggravated battery when the individual whom the battery is being um, conducted against is 65 years of age or older. So throwing popcorn at somebody 
or hitting them in the head or both is simple battery. So battery, right? So that is the act of, you know, physical force upon someone where that's not invited. Now, um, at the time, Mr. Reeves was six, at least 65 uh, age or older. Um, and because of his age, it turns a simple battery into an aggravated battery. Now, an aggravated battery is enumerated as a list of different felonies that are considered forcible felonies within the state of Florida. Now, one can use deadly force against somebody else to stop the commission of an imminent forcible, forcible felony. Now, whether or not Mr. Reeves knew that or knew that that's how the law worked at the time or consciously made a decision to use his gun because he knew that at the time is irrelevant because your knowledge of the law is not necessarily something that's relevant at the time when you use the force. That is just how the law works. It shouldn't be. I got you. Okay. But if um, you're, if you're 66.3 years old, strolling around town, looking for somebody 64 or under knowing you got that thing on you, I mean, just saying, I'm not saying, I'm just saying, okay. Especially with yeah. you know, 30 some odd years of law enforcement experience. Okay. I'm not arguing with you, but it's, it's, yeah. wonky, that's a wonky one. That's a wonky one. I absolutely will. And uh, I just wanted to clarify real quick. Um, if someone says, I'm going to kill you, you can't physically assert yourself on them if it seems like they've got real intention. Is I, I had to walk away. Is that is that true? That's if someone it, says, I, I'm, I'm going to kill you, and then like walks, you know, I guess even just walks towards you, you don't have the right to defend, like attack them? Uh, no, not necessarily. So, like anything it all depends right so if they say <clears throat> let's say we're all in the same room right and i look at you chris and i say i'm going to kill you i do nothing else no you can't do anything right right because because i haven't manifested those intentions other than verbally i need to combine okay. it with a physical action such as i'm going to kill you you know, or I'm going to kill you and I make a motion towards my waistband to try to retrieve what you perceive to be a weapon because of the fact that I just said that I was going to kill you and I made a motion that was consistent with retrieving a weapon, right? But it's those two things combined, the, uh, the, the verbal plus the physical manifestation because it requires that I actually show to you that I have the intent and the wherewithal to be able to do it. Gotcha. Cool. Yep. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I, <laughs> I don't like that, by the way. I mean, that's the statute. You showed it to us, right? That's what it is. Yeah. But I mean, that's, hmm. that so makes it, that's, because of that his makes it age. He was allowed to shoot him because it was aggravated battery because of the age difference. And that's literally the only reason it was legally justified. You can make the legal argument. Now, here's the thing. We'll never know why the, or we may never know, why the jury made the decision they did. Because here's the thing. He could be, let's ignore all this stuff. Think of the most crazy and wild situation that you could think of where this dude shot the other dude and it was just completely unjustified. The, there's no legal shenanigans, nothing, right? The jury can still choose to acquit him, despite all of that. Now, does that happen? Not often, if at all, right? But it's possible. But I just say that to say all of these things compound upon one another, and they create that reasonable doubt within the jury that exhibits its, itself this way through acquitting people that you're like, damn, I thought that dude was going to jail. You know, because we don't know how they were thinking. Now, some of those jury members may come out later and say, hey, yeah, this was the situation. This is what we talked about. Maybe somebody writes a book or something. Yeah, who knows, right? Um, but until that happens, if it happens, we won't know what they were thinking. So I can't say to you, hey, and, and point to this statute and say, hey, this is why 
This is why he, he got acquitted, acquitted. It could be a reason. It's part of it. It could be part of it, you know, but it's also that, that reasonable doubt where I was saying like, Hey, he, he got struck in the head or he claims to have been struck in the head by a hard object that we later knew was a cell phone, but maybe he perceived it at the time as being a, a blackjack or a, a sap or who knows, right? This is an old dude. He might've gotten, I mean, the 46 year old guy might've really hit him on the side of the head pretty hard where he started seeing stars. We don't know. Right. So we probably there... do know though. Is there, I know you're not uh, a, prose- a, a state prosecutor, um, but from, from your depth of knowledge, answer as best you can. I'm not going to, you know, crucify you by it, but is there a, um, where does where does that reasonable doubt drop off in terms of the relative charge? If they're, if they're charging, if they're looking to charge him with murder and the jury's presented, like we mentioned before, with these lesser charges, does that reasonable doubt carry across the whole gambit of charges? Or is that need something that needs to be looked at per potential charge? Like, okay, we have enough reasonable doubt to say it wasn't murder. Now let's look at manslaughter. Now let's look at assault. Let's look at whatever. Like, yeah, he's completely scot-free. Is there a cascading effect? I guess is a better way to ask that with that within that reasonable doubt. Well, um, so with the reasonable doubt, I mean, it, it could have that effect. It depends on what those lesser charges are, okay. right? Usually the lesser charges have um, more lenient expectations of how someone fits into them. So when you look at like second degree murder, with, uh, which is what he was charged with, then think about what a lesser degree, what a lesser charge with that would be like. Uh, aggravated battery, battery, stuff like that. Well, if you didn't, if you, if you're not guilty of murder, then how do I make you guilty of battery? You know what I mean? So be, especially in self-defense, especially in self-defense, because self-defense is the excuse to an otherwise unlawful activity, which is killing somebody or using physical force against them. Um, so it can have that effect, but it depends on what the lesser charges are, and it depends on how the jury interpreted those lesser charges versus the evidence that they heard, right? Because these people, you have to understand, and, and very often in this case, these people are not, you know, legal scholars. No. If they the same, were, they the probably... the same we were talking about in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> like, and if somebody was a, a lawyer or a prosecutor or defense attorney or whatever, they would be, they would be kicked out of the jury selection process. Instantly. You know? Yeah. So... And it, because it's supposed to be a jury of your peers, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it just depends on how they interpreted it, right? But they could very well think, hey, if he's not guilty of murder, how the hell could he be guilty of anything else, right? And sometimes sometimes juries get caught up in like, yeah, I don't think he's guilty of murder, but I really don't like the fucking guy. I think he's a scumbag. Well, let's at least get him on the battery or let's at least get him on the And, and sometimes it's a negotiation. It's not mm-hmm. even like, Hey, let's look at this case on the merits of the law and how to interpret it. It's like, how do we come to a conclusion here with six or 12 different people that are going to have different opinions? And some of those opinions they haven't earned because they're idiots. So, I mean, just think about what I, I'd like to be on a jury on a, one point just to see how it works and like get into the del- deliberations and stuff. Cause I think that it's really interesting, but it would never let um, that happen. No. No, I'd get you'd have, you'd right have to lie your way through that whole yeah. selection process, dude. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, but you know, that's exactly why. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, it again, it it depends on what those lesser charges were and and okay. what people thought about, but it but it's impossible to get inside the jury, um, inside the Chris jury room. Get himself in a courtroom as a gun expert one day. That'd be cool. Absolutely. Listen, if he keeps on the same track that he's on right now with what he's doing, he's going to be a legal use of force expert, expert for the state of Florida. So, yeah, that's, that's exactly that's, the plan. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, that's a path for uh, for a lot of a lot of people in the industry. Um, so, I don't know, man. I'm not uh, I'm not exactly happy with the outcome. Um. But so in your the, mind, the age caveat, again, not, I know you're not his attorney in your mind, the age caveat within the, the, the state of Florida, how it works with what we've got presented at the very least, what we know of 
the presented facts. That was probably the the biggest swinging factor that at least you can see just in, in a in a top down analysis. Um, I don't. Well, I don't know. I don't think it would be the biggest. Um, I'd I'd say if we accept. And again, I'd have to go back and look at the testimony. I don't know that uh, I don't know that this was brought up for sure, or what, because Mr. Uh, Mr. Reeves actually took the stand in his own defense too. Mm -hmm. So his testimony would probably be the most clear um, indication of how this was portrayed to the jury. But the reasonable doubt of him being struck in the head by that hard object, later known to be the cell phone, could be enough reasonable doubt. You know, because Mr. Reeves could get up on the on the bench and you know, I'd have to watch the testimony, but he could easily get up on the bench and say, yeah. And so the guy was saying, F you, F this, I'm going to F and kill you or whatever, threw the popcorn at me. And then next thing I know, I got hit on the side of the head with something hard and I saw stars and I felt like I was about to pass out. So I, I drew my gun and I shot him. That's the key. You know? That pass out. That pa I remember you told me that before too, especially with yeah. law enforcement. Uh, when they feel like they're getting ready to go unconscious, the weapon, their carry weapon can be used uh, as an assault or a tool of assault. So that's something they have to compensate for with, uh, with regards to their own uh, physical abilities and stuff. It's a wild thing I never considered. And, and despite the fact that it was just a cell phone, right, you have to also consider how hard did he get hit? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that threat How is escalated much? if he thinks he's going to be unconscious, knowing he's got a loaded weapon on. What's the yeah. next step? If I go, if I go out and I have a loaded weapon, this guy could do X, Y, and Z. Right. Yeah, um, and what, what's and what's the next blow that's coming? You know, you just got popcorn thrown as the distraction. Next, he's hitting you with whatever he's got in his hand. That's you know hard and made of glass. Uh, you know, what's the next? Uh, the next thing that could potentially happen. I think that it seems reasonable if you're carrying to, to maybe make that decision. Did he, how many times did he fire? Do you know? Just once. So just once I can obviously play devil's advocate on both sides of this, but all of us being of sound and reasonable mind. I, and I know we're slightly biased because we train situational awareness we train to defend ourselves in, in a lot of different types of situations and to avoid things like this in general if if and i understand it's we have we're in a stand your ground state i got it so leaving avoidance is not a factor but well it's not a requirement i'm not a requirement legally it's not, not a legal requirement correct yeah. i also can acknowledge fairly that legally we can't consider Mr. Reeves training in prior history as a part or mitigating factor in this case. It's got to be what happened in this instance. So yes, could he have known that he's pretty much got a clean shoot because of his age? If he's been assaulted? Yeah, he might have known that. But like as a reasonable person functioning in society, you tell me somebody hit you with popcorn and a cell phone. I don't think anybody's going to be like, fucking shoot his ass. Nobody. So when we go back to what you said about a jury of his peers, I still struggle with like they had to have done a really good job creating that 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 little seed of doubt, like a really good job creating that doubt to make that whole jury be like for popcorn and a cell phone or the prosecution oh, did a really poor job. That. Yeah, yeah and I'm, as, right. I'm un, as I'm understanding it, that that was part of the part of the case here. Was that they they kind of did a pretty pretty poor job, you know, and um, you know you you bring him into the courtroom with a cane. He had a cane. It's an old looking dude. I mean, there there's something to the fact that it took eight years to get to trial. That was a strategy. Yeah, right? he's because, way more enfeebled. As I understood it, six months prior to the actual physical altercation in the theater, dude was still head working as head of security at Bush Gardens. Is that is that accurate? that i don't know okay i think he was because he's obviously retired already from law enforcement but i believe he is and i i can be fact checked on that but i believe six months prior to this altercation he was head of security at bush gardens the dude was still working he was out there he's not laid up in a bed somewhere right like you said well, you, 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 you strolled in there on a cane eight years later it's a different story right right because that because that's what the jury sees and it, and it influences 
head of security at Bush Gardens is a desk job, just FYI. Sure. But my point is he wasn't getting fed through an IV sitting in the old folks' home somewhere as this decrepit old man. Like, he's doing okay. He can move around. He's still got his wherewithal to, you know, schedule a security team, probably brief his team. Like, he, he's got... He's got his his wits about him was my was kind of the only point I was making with that. In another eight years, when you know when you start at sixty five, sixty six, however he however old he was at the time, yeah, he's strolling seventy two, seventy three now. Or you might be dead. Mm -hmm. There's no trial then. Yeah, and you got your eight years, you know, because you have the right to a speedy trial uh, in the U.S., but he waived that right, and so. You know, you can't take forever. And I don't know exactly why this took as long as it did, because it was a long time. But that is a strategy. You know, you maybe just wait it out. It's a win win because either he's dead by the time the trial happens and no trial happens and he got his freedom for the entire period of time up until he died, or he comes in more enfeebled and gets the, uh, you know, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? For the jury, sympathy, you know, they, they look, sympathy, yeah. yeah. So, and hey, you got you got uh, you got the Ruskies back in the back in the center of the bullseye, so it's real easy, right? No one's going to notice this. We'll just electric slide right on out of this courtroom. Everyone's worried about Putin, right? So, hmm. but I mean, lessons on this thing, like the fact is, on both ends of the spectrum, you never, you really never know who you're fucking with. You don't know. On the one hand, this dude, the, the popcorn guy, Olson, couldn't possibly have known that he was popping off to a former SWAT commando that was packing. He could not have possibly known that. But at the same time, that is why you don't just go off on people. You yeah, know what I mean? Because you never really know. And on the other hand, for Reeves, you really never know if the dude you're mouthing off to is going to turn around and hit you over the face, uh, uh, over the head with his fucking cell phone, causing you to want to think that you need to shoot him. If you're the one carrying the gun, you know? So it's like, none of this shit was worth it, man. I, I agree completely. None of it was worth it. It's, it's nonsense. It's ego out of control and uh, someone's dead because of it. And, and this, you know, this guy's got a kid and a wife and all that stuff. And was he an asshole too? Of course, they both were. They're both fucking assholes entirely. But again, fuck man, popcorn and a cell phone. So we talk, and you you talk about you, you're my firearms instructor. You, you tell me about this stuff. What what are the four rules of firearm safety? He didn't shoot anybody beyond Mister Reeves. So he's got enough wherewithal to still discharge his firearm safely and efficiently. One shot, one kill. No bullet, no over penetration to shoot anybody else in the theater. Directly on target. How many stars was he seeing? These are things that I think of, but is a jury thinking about that? I don't know. I think he was lucky on that. I mean, he, well. He got luck, well, and then you've got, got him, you've got 30 years of kicking doors and training yeah. people like do you know you i don't know the distance it was pretty much point blank it yeah was pretty I much was, that's blank. what i was that's what i was imagining. and I'm, I'm not saying that that's a difficult shot it's not it, obviously because the distance is basically negligible it's nothing it's just i've seen that i've seen that happen twice I'm sure it happens more than that but i've seen it happen twice one was the the zimmerman shooting and it was one shot right through the heart immediately incapacitating and i'm like uh maybe it's a small it, it's a short distance but it's also a really small target mm -hmm. you know especially um, if you're a enfeebled so. old man that's woozy because you just got assaulted by a guy that's you know 30 years younger than you and you yeah. don't know what to do and you're afraid for your life it comes out real clean and gets on target real quick and, and doesn't penetrate and shoot anybody else or hit his wife that's next to him or anything. I'm just, it does, well, he did it, did, did hit his wife. Oh, did, did. his wife. Okay. I didn't, yeah. I wasn't aware of it, that. See, so more so we didn't know. Yeah. So not that it matters in terms of the legality of the case, but uh, his wife was struck through the hand. So it passed through her hand into his chest and through his heart. 
um, you can imagine a situation where he's, yeah, 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 fuck you, fuck you. And then she's, his she's wife's like, no, no, no. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think, um, I think honestly what he did is he just stuck the gun out there and pulled the trigger. And it just so happened to be. That's what happened. I mean, it wasn't a, you know. Let me aim down. Else. I got to make sure it goes <laughs> into the floor. Yeah. No, none of that. So I, think, I think he just got lucky. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, not worth it. Not worth it. And again, you never can tell who you're fucking with. I got to remind myself of that sometimes. Man, that is uh, that's scary stuff. Um, there's there's so many what ifs. And obviously we could dive deeper in. It's not going to change anything, Like kind of like you said at the head of the conversation. But um, it's one of those things that doesn't sit right. But legally, here we are, right? And if you're not gonna, and, and we we can all sit here and, and and say yeah we don't like it, but at the same time, we'll all rally for when uh, when it goes the opposite direction and public opinion sways juries and the legal system's thrown completely out the window, and people are put in prison for for life for pissing off public opinion when they weren't legally guilty of anything. So I guess you can't eat your cake and have it too, you know. Well, the perfect example of what you just said is that Kim Potter shit. Ding, ding, ding. Did you lay that out for me? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's uh, what was it? Dante Wright. Yep. Kim Potter is, uh, what was the charge she got? I know she was found guilty, but what was it? First and second degree manslaughter. Yeah. So that's another one of those situations, right? You've got an on-duty law enforcement officer. Not, not retired according to the i believe it was uh the lapel cam the chest cam video where she's taser taser i'm going for she thought she was going for a taser shoots the guy um there was aggression like there was uh, in my opinion from what you could tell there was some type of forceful intervention needed um was it a lack of training was it I'm going to yell this and then try to kill this guy, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't really matter because, again, jury said cop, killed guy, jail. Yeah. And more importantly, white cop killed black guy yeah. during this period of time, you know. Where if this happened eight super... years ago, is the verdict the same? I don't know. No, it couldn't have been. Well, if the, I mean, tri if so, the trial was going on now, yes, because they'd still pump it up because yeah. it's white cop, black guy. But yeah, mm. I, you know, so from a training perspective, I'm sure it, you've watched the video, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sure in the beginning, because it, it was a, it was a male, it was, it was two or three cops, including her. It was, I believe, two male officers and her, yes. And they got up under him first mm -hmm. and had him pinned up, pinned up against the car. And I remember just watching it and just kind of seeing the, the grappling part of it, like falling apart, how he's kind of snaking out. I don't remember exactly how it played out, but I remember looking at it. Cops in general thinking, are trained for shit when it comes to yeah. holding people down without use of weapons. Right. Restraining physically restraining like there, there's a lot of work to be done on that aspect and that's part of why we exist as at ethereal so yeah let's go yeah the ta taser's a cheat code and it's effective but sure you know um so but at any rate i i'm on the range a lot and i have a decent set of skills as it relates to shooting and and I know, I know what, <laughs> I know what kind of like beginner, intermediate, advanced, and all of that stuff look like. And I see all different types on the range. You know, I'll only say this: um, I see a lot of cops, a lot of females, and a lot of people that claim to be this, that, and the other thing. They've got whatever background they've got, right? And then you see him walk up to the line and start shooting. It's like, man, that's hardly even a basic level of understanding on how to use your weapon. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, is they're trained so much more on the gun than they are the taser. 
And if they suck on the gun, well, forget about it, right? Absolutely. But there's also this this uh, notion brought up by um, a doctor that works for a company called Force Science, and it, I don't know it intimately, but what it's called is slips in capture errors. And the idea is is that when you're trained to use multiple different items. You know, you've got a cop with a bat belt. He's got the flashlight, the uh, pepper spray, the taser, a baton, maybe the radio, um, tourniquet, medical equipment, firearm. Again, they're primarily trained on the firearm because that is debatably the most important or at least the most, the highest consequence item on their belt, right? Yeah. If there's anything that you really need to be good at, it's that. Because if you use it and miss, you're hurting somebody else, right? So... What sli- the, the notion of slips and capture says is you may have fully intended on using the taser, and that's what you told your brain to do. But at some point through that decision-making process, you slipped off of that path, and the item that you've trained more, uh, with more, rather, I should say, captures that thought process, and you default to the gun rather than the taser. Now they make efforts to disassociate the taser from the gun in that generally, if you're a right-handed shooter, you've got the gun on your right-hand side, and then you have the taser on the opposite side, the left side with a completely different draw stroke. And that's a measure utilized to disassociate them so that you don't make that mistake. Mm -hmm. But despite that, those mistakes do still happen. And um, the doctor for this company talks about how people make the same kind of mistake all the time in real world world. One of the examples is let's say um, you go and rent a car for the weekend, right? And you try to stick the uh, key in the ignition for that new car that you've never been in. Well, you probably try to stick it in the same way that you do on the car that you own, even though it's a different car. I'm sure we've all done that. Yeah, or you the keyhole's not even there. Whatever the case is. <laughs> And you, and you do it two or three times. Like, what the fuck is going on? It's not going to fit, dude. Different car, <laughs> right? But the brain works in weird ways, and this is one of them. This is kind of somewhat explains why this could have happened, right? right? And I'll just say, police officers, they don't, most of them don't train nearly as much as they need to. The majority of them don't. Especially the females. Sorry. No, and that's that's another point, and you can feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on this as well, but I, I'm fairly sure I've read more than once that she was uh, a desk jockey maybe three to four months prior to this, and because of lack of bodies, because of a lot of the uh, the things going on, she was one of the ones that were pushed out into street patrol. Could and be. Was just flat out not prepared for that. Yeah, not not sure. Could be. And, and you know, she could have very well felt pretty comfortable in the fact, Hey, I got two other guys with me and big dudes. I got a lot of training, you know, the, Mm -hmm. and they know who the pipe hitters are, you know, maybe that's who, Hey, I'm, I'm okay. I got this. And then shit gets weird and it gets weird really quick, Mm -hmm. you know, and what they, what they don't want to have happen is him get into the car, turn it back on. If it was, I'm not sure if it was on or off at the time, but at any rate, get it back on and then start driving over with cops under the wheels. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So I, I would ask then, because I don't part of it's a part of it's ignorance, but like in a situation like this, were the other, were the t- other two officers with her charged as well? No, I mean, they didn't do anything. Right. Uh, right. So how many other instances have we seen where a party and i can bring up one specifically where there's you know a, a somebody that's got a lot of murals painted all over the place um four officers were charged in that specific situation yeah well with, i know with felonies yeah and well we, uh at least two of them were helping restrain floyd I not think. all four not all four no but i guess they made the argument that the other dude was complicit I it's I'm not arguing I just it's it's interesting to me how to, to see how that line gets drawn in different jurisdictions and municipalities it's 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 interesting right but um, before we go ahead move on p- past her I just want to say so she was convicted of manslaughter first degree second degree uh-huh. okay um 
Second degree manslaughter says a person who causes the death of another by any of the following means is guilty of manslaughter in the second degree and may be sentenced to imprisonment for not more than 10 years or payment of fine more than 20,000 20, or both by the person's culpable negligence, whereby the person creates an unreasonable risk and consciously takes the chances of causing death or great bodily harm to another. Okay. That's a big word there. The person's culpable negligence, whereby the person creates an unreasonable risk and consciously takes the chance of causing death. She didn't. It is not under debate that she drew, meant to drew her gun, draw, <laughs> drew her gun, draw her gun. She did not mean to draw the gun. Her testimony says that she did not mean to draw the gun. The body camera, camera footage in the heat of the moment substantiates that she did not mean to draw the gun by word and deed right i mean she said taser 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 mm -hmm. now yeah there could be the conspiracy of hey she just said that to try to get one in and like okay but you're gonna have to you're gonna have to show me that some evidence that actually suggests the other that, one right? was like, that the other one was that one of the other officers that may or may not have been entangled with him at the time that she was calling out to him that the suspect was going for his taser mm. Mm which I don't think the video supports. No, and I'm sure that it was addressed in the trial, but I'm not, uh, but I don't know for a fact. Um, there is likely an agency rule that Absolutely. states if you're going to deploy your taser that you say taser, taser, taser right? Because um, you don't want any sort of crossfire. Absolutely. So, so I'm, I'm sure they could immediately dispel that by just saying, no, she was trained to say taser, taser, taser. And here's the, here's the rule book that she had on day one. So mm -hmm. fuck you, you're stupid. Yeah. Um, but we saw that around that murder charge. <laughs> and the, and the crazy thing is, is that the jury, despite the very clear legal language within the statute statute of first and second degree uh, murder, man, uh, sorry, manslaughter rather. Um, and despite the fact that all of the evidence showed that it was literally a mistake, they still convicted her. Mm -hmm. This is. This is a complete miscarriage of justice because she's not literally guilty of what they by definition. Of. Yeah. Yeah. Period. And it, it and doesn't matter if you agree with her actions or not. She's literally, literally, if you look at the law, she didn't do what they said she fucking did. Right. And I, that's insane. Yeah. But but that that's the point that I was making to your friend, uh, uh, you know, at, at the brewery the other night. Hey, juries do weird shit, so you can't count on, you know, your buddy at the police force that said, well, you know, if they just come out on the back porch, you get the old shot of Reno and like whatever. It's a clean shoot. Plus the whatever. Up in the air. <laughs> yeah, do the old Biden on the back porch. Like, don't fucking do that. What are Me you? Me and my pal about? Corbin Pop, we used to come out here and shoot into the night sky. Yeah. Oh Hair my legs. <laughs> but this is how people think. And that, and that it's wild. she's the kind of person that would be on a jury, you know, mm -hmm. it, maybe not with that line of thinking necessarily, no, no, no. but just that kind of like incorrect way, illogical way of looking at. But shit. it's easy to see that these are people that we interact with. We have, I can have a conversation. We can have a beer. I will hug up. We're great. Supports, you know, loves my family. We're great. But they have, there are people like you said this jury of our peers just people that we look at and consider logical you know I, I hate to use the word normal but you know even keeled at least chemically in the brain people we would assume would make rational judgments can go off on a tangent like some of the things that we heard explored in that conversation i don't have to bring it up specifically but it's like a couple yeah. of those moments i was even like okay didn't know that and, <laughs> like and that's kind of wild and and they'll try to justify it as if it's a debate or an argument. And I'm yeah. just like, hey, no, this is good natured advice to keep you out of jail yeah. and the grave. I'm not <laughs> trying so. to yell at you. I'm not telling you you're wrong. I'm just letting you know that shit can get you in trouble. No, well, my buddy said, oh, you know what? Cool. All right. Good luck with that. I'm not coming over for dinner. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Arrested in a shooting. Audio. San Jose police yes. arrested two-time UFC heavyweight champion and WWE star Kane Velasquez. He's facing attempted murder charges, though police 
are not yet revealing a motive. The shooting happened yesterday afternoon on Bailey Avenue near Monterey Road. San Jose police say one man was shot and hospitalized with non life threatening injuries. Alaska as it was born in Salinas, but has lived in for years in the South Bay. So that was the initial report on the news. Okay, this is over the weekend just now. So stuff is still coming out. Um, none of this in terms of what I'm about to say is official legal fact or corroborated, just hearsay within the mixed martial arts community. You know how this stuff operates. We know people, not we specifically, but martial artists. We know people in everybody's gyms and everybody knows somebody in everybody else's gym and stuff. I gets, fucking know people. Okay? I know fucking people, come on. Um, <laughs> So this stuff gets around fairly quickly, but the underlying source of the story here, where she just said we don't know the details yet, is Kane has a couple young children, one of which was assaulted in a daycare facility at the end of last week. Um, we don't know if it was a physical beating, sexual assault, whatever. Uh, Mr. Velasquez then, in response to this abuse to his young I believe daughter uh, found the accused individual who was in a vehicle with his father at the time. The, the, whose father? Mr. Velasquez found the guy that was accused of assaulting his daughter and the accused assaulter's father were in a vehicle together. Oh, okay. Yep. yep. So bad guy and bad guy's dad are in a car. Velasquez sees him and runs up with the pistol. Mm. shoots doesn't kill the dad just shoots into the car um so the the underlying support that i'm seeing for kane beyond the fact that obviously we're most martial artists are probably a little biased is he was a really good champion blah 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 great boxer all the fun stuff it's the mentality of touch my fucking kids i'm gonna kill you without the benefit of knowing all the details. This obviously falls into what we talked about or what you brought up before with in terms of self-defense. He left the situation with his kid. If that's true, it wasn't a present moment situation. That's something that happened. He learned about it after the fact and then sought out these individuals. From what I understand, he volunteered himself over to law enforcement after the fact um, went in without any type of issues and allowed himself to be, you know, detained to stand trial. Obviously, it's difficult, probably impossible to, to argue self-defense, but is there any type of extenuating circumstances or argument from what you know of? Obviously, I know you're not super versed in California law either, um, but any type of indigent circumstances or anything that would potentially I don't even want to say get him off, but maybe get his his charges reduced from what they're looking at for murder charges right now, or attempted murder. Sorry, attempted murder charge, because the guy's still alive as far as this morning. No, I mean, uh, the only thing, the only thing um, that could save him now, uh, other than the state botches the case, obtains evidence illegally, any sort of, you know, procedural trial nonsense. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's, there's no, there's no legal justification. And keep in mind is. where he is. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Astros, don't lose your train of thought. He's in California. Right. Not a gun friendly state. No, no. Um, so, yeah, the, so the only thing that could really help him at this point is what's called jury nullification. So um, so it basically what it is is the jury rejects the evidence and refuses to apply the law. Now, they have the right to do this. It's not something that juries are instructed on. In other words, at the end, after, deliber or after uh, closing arguments in the state's rebuttal, uh, to the defense's uh, closing argu arguments, the judge provides the jury with a set of instructions that basically says, hey, here's how you're supposed to come to the conclusion based off of the law and the facts and blah, 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 and, and some procedural stuff they'll put in there as well. 
Um, they don't tell them that they have the right to do this, but they do. Um, and they also have the right to convict them. They also have the right to uh, um, to not convict them, right? Yeah, I mean, that's what you just said in the Potter case, right? Regardless of evidence. Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and so literally that's the only thing that can save him at this point because there's no legal way in which what he did was did was justified despite of course. all the moral justifications in the world yeah, yeah. and that's the crazy that's the scary part because when it like you said a jury you never know you never know what kind of kool-aid they're on that day but you and i can sit here as virtuous individuals and say you no know, if you assault someone's young baby child you know uh daycare age child you've you you've got to answer for that and 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 you know what the state will do what's that during jury selection they're going to get rid of all of the people that have children every single fucking one of them do you get rid of all the people that have ever watched a ufc or a boxing match in a wwe match too hmm I don't think that'll be as important as, as the child factor, mm-hmm. and then, and perhaps they'll go that direction as well. But if they, I'm sure if they had to make the decision, do I take the person? Because they can't just keep excluding people forever, right? No, because but he's also got a jury full of Californians. So, just the fact that he had a gun, right? <laughs> so like, that's that's not good, man. Yeah, but, but I mean, you know, Californians may not necessarily because of where they live think that guns are bad yeah i mean mean, even it but even if they did right you can imagine a situation where somebody has a kid and they're like well shit i would have shot him too you know and and so they're trying to get rid of those people out of the jury and that's what'll happen so that's awful man but i uh, if that's the case right i'm presenting hearsay at this point because it's this, we're only talking this story is like a day and a half old, so I'm presenting hearsay um, and, and arguing based off of that. We, we have this, so we have to wait for facts to come out. But um, you know, from him being so physically skilled, I mean, let's let's be honest, he's a heavyweight mixed martial arts champion, boxing champion, and I mean, WWE's entertainment, but there still requires some athleticism. The guy can handle himself physically. I, he could probably easily found this guy and beat him to death with his bare hands chose the firearm and ended up shooting the guy's dad i don't know if it It makes great for him go ahead makes me wonder if he only fired one shot yeah i I, i'm i'm looking yeah like really or if he just lit the whole vehicle up and just dad got hit i don't know it's uh it uh, it makes me want to really look forward to uh getting more details and seeing what happened but at the same time like like you were talking about before where i was kind of trying to get to in my head with like the, the potter situation where a jury of peers literally took the law the letter of the law said okay x y and z cool yeah that doesn't apply but fuck it she's guilty anyway it's hard right be, we're fought we're both fathers we're already biased like acknowledged we both have daughters super biased it's hard then to sit especially in a state like california when you can look around and see all the shortcomings of the legal system in the government when it comes to you know feces on the road and homeless everywhere and, and violence and all all the other nonsense that's going on not that those problems don't exist everywhere but california has become a, a a bigger example so much so that people are flocking out of the state in droves like coming to states like eh, florida because we have less of those issues can you trust the jury of your peers to then say that this guy wasn't just a minor attracted individual and that he's got a mental illness and that the system will put this guy away where he needs to be so he doesn't hurt someone else's kid right probably not it's a sticky thing to think about man sticky 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 but even if they did i mean i'm sure you and i can agree there isn't enough that the justice system could do no, to that, that person not that even would close. make it you know not even close so. well that's the dad in us talking right I'm, I'm trying to look at it from more of a societal and in from your expertise more of that that all right well what's the law say kind of perspective but it's really hard for me to get from a to b with that particular one just obviously i've got a lot of inherent bias on this one right so I would I would have to question whether or not that bias could be duplicated from an inverse perspective 
and what that would actually look like and how somebody might be driven to take these kind of actions if they're looking around like no one's going to help me in this situation somebody just hurt my daughter it's not a far leap no not at all wild stuff well, CK, I know you've got a heart out this morning. We've got some uh, yep. we've got some important business that we got to take care of in the morning. So I look forward to seeing you in the AM. And uh, I greatly appreciate your time tonight, man. It was fun to kind of dig into some of this legal stuff and get your uh, get your expert opinion on some of this. That I, especially get some of these questions cleared up that I have. Of course, of course, my Thank pleasure. You. I appreciate you.